Good afternoon everybody and it's really great to be here with so many people that are here specifically for badgers. Um, that's just something very special to me. Those of you who know me will possibly know the history of how I became involved in badgers because I was actually a dairy farmer alongside my husband and because of milk quotas we became non-viable. We opened our farm to the general public and people started to bring orphaned and injured wildlife into us. And it was in 1989 that I had my very first badger cubs brought into me. Very, very tiny ones, only five weeks old with their eyes open. And once I had them in, I knew that I was going to have to find out as much as I could about badgers because being an ex-dairy farmer and indeed having had a TB outbreak in our herd, I understood the conflict that went on between badgers and also with cattle. And so with all the different um, research things that have been done, the badger culling trial that went on, I followed everything very, very closely because I wanted to know, A, that we were doing things responsibly when we were releasing badger cubs, and B, just find out exactly how important badgers are in this problem of bovine TB. And before the badger cull started in 1990, I can't remember exactly the date, 1998, I think, 1997, 98, and I can remember Chris Cheeseman, who used to be the government advisor on bovine TB for 35 years, saying to me, Pauline, this research programme is going to once and for all tell us whether badgers are really connected to bovine TB in cattle. Yes, badgers are going to get killed, but at the end of it, we will know exactly what the truth is. And eight years later, including a foot and mouth year, after 11,000 badgers being killed, 85% of those blood tested to find out whether they had TB or not, and 85% of those were negative, even though those animals came from high incidence TB areas. At that, the end of that experiment that cost us 53 million pounds, the ruling was that badger culling plays no meaningful contribution to the control of, bird, of bovine TB in cattle. So since then, I, alongside many other people, have been trying to fight the fact that you shouldn't be culling badgers. And it was brilliant that Labour took on those results and stopped all badger culling. But it's very hard when you've historically been told that badgers are the problem. And being part of the farming community, I know just how much is passed down from father to son. And please don't remember, do remember that farmers, a lot of farmers do actually like their badgers. The NFU only represents 30% of our farmers. The majority of them actually don't worry about the badgers on their land. So don't always think that it's the, bad, the farmer's fault because it certainly isn't. I've probably handled about, I don't know, one, 2,000 badgers over the years that I've done badger rehab and they are fascinating creatures. I've had them from newborn right up to elderly ones that have got to the end of their lives. And the ethics that we always have is that we make sure that we get animals back to the wild or else we euthanize them. And it's been my pleasure, my joy to be able to be that close to badgers and to be able to be part of, of releasing them. And they are so strong, such an animal that when it's got cubs, when we had one in once that had three day old cubs, we, put, we had to keep her in because she had a womb infection and she had to have antibiotics. We put fresh food and water in for her every day. She didn't drink for two weeks. She didn't eat for four weeks. Now hardly any animals could sustain that and feed cubs in the way that she was. But then that's why they're so strong. That's why they're good for badger digging, badger baiting all these things that still carry on. And that's where we kind of hoped that the Badger Protection Act was gonna stop it. And that's what we were basically told when the act was brought in, that they estimated about 10,000 badgers were killed every year for badger baiting and badger digging. And we now know that we're back up to those sort of numbers again. Persecution of badgers continues because since they've actually brought in the pilot schemes which they started in Somerset and in Gloucester, 
but I just basically don't have any protection. It's, it's open season as far as badgers are concerned. I really didn't think when they were talking about it, the pilot car, that it was going to go ahead and it was just sickened me when it actually did start. And we said that we would be there, just the same as many other charities, that if there was going to be any injured, shot badgers, then we wanted them brought into us and we wanted to make sure that we were going to do our best to get the maximum amount of press to be able to stop this cull. But we also knew, like anybody else that understands and knows badgers, that when a badger is injured, it would do everything to get back to its set so that it can be back with its family, even if it's got to die underground. That is the one instinct that they have. So the pilot scheme was very, very clever because the only ones they were going to see were the ones that were killed. The ones that were injured probably died underground. And we will never, ever know just how many of those did die underground. Three days into the first cull, we had our first shot badger brought into us dead of course. We hung on to it despite the fact that there was a huge interest from the police and also the NLU wanting it back um, but we actually had that one post-mortem but we couldn't find anybody to post-mortem it until the end of the culling program and indeed we had a second badger in in the same period and once we had those post-mortemed all that information went to the independent expert panel that was overseeing the pilot scheme which was really only meant to be about seeing whether you can shoot free running badgers cheaply so that they could hand it over to farmers. And the independent expert panel that looked onto this, looked over the whole thing, not only did they find that it was inefficient, ineffective and inhumane, the government actually stopped them from publishing their report and eventually they had to leak that report out in order to get it out into the press. So you'd think, wouldn't you, second year round, they wouldn't go ahead and do the cull. But yes, what they do is they go ahead and they do the cull and they just don't have anybody monitoring it. And when you consider you've got Natural England that are the people that actually hand out these licenses and meant to all understand all the business to do with badgers, speak to anyone that's doing a vaccination program and indeed the person that was doing a vaccination program in Somerset wanted to find out what protection were these badgers going to get, these ones that were vaccinated and yet in amongst the culls. And the first thing that Natural England told us was that we should keep them in. Wild badgers, keep them in just because they're vaccinated. Do they not understand that these are wild animals that range? So then we said, well, we can't do that. So the next idea from Natural England was to feed them at the set so that they don't go any further and don't go anywhere near where people are vaccinating. And if they really don't understand badgers that well, why on earth are they doing all the different legislation to do with actual licenses? But we go on with our calls, even though it was meant to be an experiment to see whether we could actually shoot free-ranging badgers. But all of a sudden it becomes a TB issue and we've got to do it for four years. And it doesn't matter what we seem to do, we cannot get the message across to the general public what is happening in our counties and is now likely to happen in many, many counties across the country. It means that there are going to be out there people shooting badgers at night shooting them with bullets that if they miss their targets, those bullets have the ability of traveling two to three miles before they stop. Animals that are going to be injured rather than going to be killed outright. And it's unbelievable that that is actually going on in our countryside. We are doing marches. We are doing everything that we possibly can, but we still don't have enough public help to try and stop this dreadful thing that is going on in our country. And if you are new people here today and you've listened and didn't realise about the cull, then please go home, tell at least another 10 people that this is happening. Because unless we get more and more people on board, we will never be able to fight this because it's purely political. It's got nothing to do with TV and cattle. It's all to do with votes. And the only way that we're going to stop it is by people power. There needs to be more of us doing more so that we can actually save badgers. I find it really, really hard that licenses now are going to be issued as soon as, literally into June, which I know from badger cubs, there will be dependent cubs. So if a badger is killed and she has cubs, 
those cubs are going to just die because they won't have a matriarch looking after them. Just before, about three or four months ago, we had some volunteers that actually heard shooting close to their home. They went out the following day to see what it was and they found a dead badger. They told me about it, they went and got it and brought it in and yes, it had been shot. In fact, it had gone through and the intestines were taken out the other side. So it wouldn't have died instantaneously. But bless her, she was found on her badger path. So she was literally trying to get back to her set before she eventually collapsed due to, to blood loss. And when we looked at her, we actually got a vet to check it and we obviously reported it to the police. But the worst part of all was that she was a lactating female. And we knew from the rings around her teats that her cubs would only be a week old. So her cubs would have taken over a week to die. And if farmers don't understand, that's why we're fighting for badgers. You know, would they have their cows shot and, and leave the calves out in the field to die? It's not as simple as it sounds. Badgers are animals that went into the 20th century, hated by many, many people. And I really thought once we got into the 21st century, we would have learnt a lot more. But here we are now with badgers in their sets, curled up with their cubs that they've born, had born this year. And within a few weeks, they will be coming up above ground without realizing that it could be the very last time that they've actually gone out to walk their territorial paths. These are historical animals. They are animals that belong to the countryside, just the same as every other wild animal that we have in our countryside. Please, please do as much as you can. Support us against the badger cull. Tell people about it. As we've heard before, write letters and do everything you possibly can. I take my hats off to those people that go to the culls and walk their paths because it's frightening. And I haven't gone down basically because I want to be at home so that if anything comes during the night, we can have a look at it, get the information, get it out to the press. But those people, they're out there in the night with torches and they're scared. But they care that much that they go out and do it every night, irrespective of whether they've got a job to go to or not. They give that time to try and save badgers. And I did actually go down on the very last night of the cull last year to see what they were doing and how they did it. And it was a beautiful night. It was absolutely cloudless and the sky was full of stars. And what was even nice looking through proper binoculars that you could see that there were still badgers out in the fields. If this keeps going on every year, there won't be badgers in those fields. We are going to lose them and we're going to lose our countryside. So please, all of you, if there's anything that you can do, care about our badgers, care about our wildlife, care about our countryside, and just do as much as you possibly can to stop these terrible calls from happening. Thank you.